Yo, yo, what's going on, you guys? Your boy Devon Terrell in raw form, and welcome to another Help Me Devon raw tutorial. And today, in this Help Me Devon tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys something that you've been asking me for, and I'm listening, gain staging. I'm going to explain gain staging as it relates to your recording and your mixing. Let's get right to it. Okay. So right here, let's explain the session first. This song that I have is literally just an imported beat of stems that I have from a producer, actually two producers, Tyler Ron and Dave Kappa, shout outs to them, super talented dudes. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to play you this beat. Literally, I pressed uh, Command uh, I, I imported the stems as the producer has sent me. This is, isn't touched or anything like that. This is literally me just bringing the raw files right into the session. I'm gonna play you this beat and what I want you to pay attention to is the meters. So everything is right at zero and I want you to pay attention to the meters. So look closely at the meters. Here we go. Okay, so if you look at that closely, you can see that on my master bus or my mix bus that it is clipping. It's basically overloaded with signal and that's with everything at zero. Now I know what you're thinking. Hey, just turn down the faders on your tracks. Okay, here's why I don't want to do that. What's happening is these faders that you're seeing are post inserts. And what that basically means is that everything after the inserts, AKA your plugins chain, this fader controls that volume afterwards. So basically, if you try to attack it after as opposed to attacking it before it hits that fader, you're really not changing much as far as it being so loud. Let me explain a little deeper. Right here I have an EQ, right? And I'm gonna solo this kick by itself. So here's the kick solo by itself. So I'm gonna play you this kick. Check this out. What I want you to do is I want you to look at the meter on the side. So look at this uh, this uh, EQ and I want you to look at the metering on the side as far as the output level of what's coming out of the EQ with this. Look closely. Okay, it's pretty hot. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this fader and I'm gonna turn it down. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna turn this fader way down. That should give us headroom, right? Look closely at the same meter. Now, as you saw the fader, I turned down almost 8 dB. And then when you looked in the plugin, it didn't change anything. Why is that? It's because this fader, all of these faders you see in are post plugin. It controls actual gain and volume after these plugins. So what does that mean? And why is this a huge mistake that people make when it comes to gain staging? And don't worry, I'm, I'm explaining it to you. Just watch me closely. Let's say for instance, I boost this kick. I wanna do some processing and I boost this kick. Let's say I boost it 2 dB at the 120 hertz range. Not saying that's correct, but let's just say I do that. Look at the meter on the right hand side. I'm clipping and all I did was add a 2 dB of gain in a certain frequency range. Now, what's gonna happen when I add analog saturation to that kick or if I decide to add a, a transient shaper, if I decide to add a bunch of different processes to this kick, guess what you're gonna be doing? You're gonna be clipping at the plugin and that is gain staging, ladies and gentlemen. This is why you want to accomplish and do it the correct way. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to gain stage. now. Before we go any further, I'd be remiss if I didn't read you a definition. And I'm not saying you have to understand this definition, but listen closely. Gain staging is the process of managing the relative levels in each step of an audio signal flow to prevent introduction of noise and distortion feeding the inserts. I'll stop there. So basically what you're trying to accomplish is an optimal level. You wanna make sure that what is coming into your plugins is an optimal signal, something that you have actual headroom so that you can maneuver, you can do processing and it won't clip and it won't cause so much digital distortion because that's the one distortion we don't like. We don't like digital distortion. So with that said, this is how I like to go about it. 
everything is at zero and it sounds fine for now. But we know that after a while, after adding a lot of processing and things of that nature, that um, basically it's going to be a mess. This mix is gonna sound terrible. This is the, probably the biggest difference between professional mixes and amateur mixes. So how do we gain stage, right? How do we make sure that what is coming onto these faders is a signal that even if I have at zero, gives me some headroom to actually do processing and move and just overall sonically sound better. So this is what I like to do. Or this is what a lot of people actually do. What I like to do is something called clip gain, okay? And this is for my Pro Tools users and then I'll explain for my users of other programs. When you clip gain, this is kind of like what the boards uh, uh, in the big studios have. When you see at the very top where it says game or trim or something like that, what I like to do is clip gain gives you the flexibility and ability to turn down the audio file before it hits the inserts, AKA your plugins. I come right over here and I can bring this down. So let's bring this down to negative 5.6. So now the clip, we clip gain this down, negative 5.6. All that's telling Pro Tools is, this signal right here on this track, turn it down 5.6 dB before it even hits my plugins or anything like that. This is called clip gaining. I am gain staging. Stay with me. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play you this kick and let's take a look at this EQ plugin. Let's take this off. Now, once again, look at the EQ. Ladies and gentlemen, I just made sure that that audio that was coming in to this actual channel path was optimal and that it wasn't clipping and that I had headroom so that I can literally do anything I want as far as processing for that signal. I am gain staging. I am making sure that this signal that's coming in is optimal, it isn't loud, it isn't clipping so that I can actually fix it and do what I want to it without introducing any noise in that signal path. All right, so now what I'm gonna show you is, and for the sake of time for this video, I've already made a, a gain staging, I already clip gain most of these tracks right here. So I copy and pasted it over in Pro Tools and I just clip gained everything down. So what I did was I clip gain all of these tracks down to negative 5.6 as you can see right here. So if you look right here, you see all of these tracks, I clip gain down to negative 5.6. Now, how did I land on 5.6 as far as my gain staging is concerned? Well, the reason is because I usually know that the kick is probably gonna be the loudest, most, uh, uh, the loudest thing that's gonna eat up the most headroom in my mix in general. So if I can get that thing that's eating up the most, that's the most transient thing in my mix to, uh, peak at a certain level that I like, then I can assume that everything else, I'm gonna put the same level so that my mix, as far as what the producers sent me, doesn't change. If you take everything down and just, uh, you know, if you grouped it all and just brought it all down one level, it doesn't change sonically. It's just, it's just lower now in volume. So that's basically what you're accomplishing. I didn't change or alter the mix of the producer. All I did was turn it all down so that when I add processing, I can actually do that without clipping uh, or adding any distortion. So here's my clip, re uh, my clip gain regions. Uh, I brought it down negative 5.6. So now I'm gonna play this for you. Look at my meters. Now, obviously you can hear that it is lower, but the beauty of it is that now I'm not clipping on my stereo master or my mix or my mix bus. Now, granted, usually I would probably clip gain this down a little bit, uh, excuse me, a lot more until I look on my mix bus and probably see around negative six dB uh, as far as the peaks overall, but you can get the idea. I did that for the sake of the video. It'll be a little too quiet for you to hear. So that's how I like to basically just kind of gauge it. I go from the kick. I say, all right, let me get this kick to maybe a negative nine dB and then everything else at negative nine dB and then look at my mix bus and see if it, where the peaks are actually hitting. And then I've clip gain everything. And now guess what? I have all of this headroom to manipulate, EQ, compress all of those audio signals as I please. So. When it comes to clip gaining, you guys, 
just understand that it's basically a safety precaution. It's a way to make sure that what signal that you're, the signal that you're using, you have actual room to, to breathe and it creates so much headroom if you just gain stage. So you're basically, like we said, let's go back to that definition one last time. One sec. Once again, now let's reiterate it to you, see if it makes sense. Gain staging is the process of managing the relative levels in each step of an audio signal flow to prevent introduction of noise and distortion feeding the inserts, such as equalizers, compressors, with the right amount of signal, particularly in the analog realm. So what is the signal flow path? We have the imported uh, stems from the producers, uh, it's hitting the inserts of this track, and then it's hitting the fader of this track. So what do we do? We make sure that the actual uh, stems that come in are low so that it's not coming into our inserts hot, because if it comes into our inserts, AKA our plugins hot, then guess what? When we add even the smallest a bit of processing, it's going to clip that signal. So you have to turn it down so that you don't you can avoid that problem. And a lot of times, I know a lot of you guys say, a lot of producers, a lot of times will send you beats and it'll be clipping all over the place. This is why, clip gaining. Last thing I'm gonna show you guys, and this is for people that uh, don't have Pro Tools. What you can do is in most DAWs, I say the majority, there is a plugin that you have in your arsenal. It's called the Gain Tool or the Trim Tool. In Pro Tools, we have one called the Trim. And what you can do is accomplish the same exact thing. So you want to put it at the you want to put the gain tool or the trim tool at the very top of your processing. The very first thing you want to do. This is what's coming into the coming into your signal pad. This is just like a board, uh, like an SSL board, a knee board. You see it right there on the top. You see gain or trim, majority of the time. What you do is you turn it down. So just how I did negative five point six. Guess what? Negative five point six. I can put it right there, and I can literally take this and put it across all of these channels. Just like that, just put it across all of these channels and now all my channels, all my all my audio signals will be down negative 5.6. Now, you do this according to your taste and stuff like that. Sometimes I go more or less around to the negative 10 when it comes to click games, depending on how hot the producer has sent it to me. But that's basically how I do that. I use, you, you can use the trim tool or the gain tool to basically accomplish your gain staging. And this works with vocals as well. When it comes to your vocals and gain staging, a lot of times what you wanna do is to make sure that you're not just boosting volume is, make sure that when you put a compressor on a vocal, right? Make sure that you keep bypassing back and forth to see if you're actually getting a louder signal or a lower signal. What I like to do is, I like to make sure that the compressed signal is just as loud as the original signal coming in. So I'll keep bypassing to make sure that it doesn't go skyrocket in volume. That's also another form of gain staging as well that you should look out for. And that's the best way to tell if, if adding just volume is what's causing you to think it sounds better when actually it's not. And that's how that goes. So you guys, I hope that was a great explanation on gain stage. And make sure you comment, like, subscribe. Make sure you follow us at Help Me Devon on the Instagram. Make sure you uh, go uh, check out helpmedevon.info. That is our new site that is up with templates, drum kits, etc. Uh, make sure you have, if, if you have any comments or concerns or anything like that, make sure you hit me in the description, excuse me, in the comments below. And um, yeah, until next time, you guys.